Plugin of the week is the Waves Metafilter. Waves Metafilter is um, a really, really cool uh, modulation uh, based filter plugin. And uh, it basically consists of a variety of different sections and um, that I will explain like very quickly. So primarily what we're really looking at is three modulation uh, areas that we can work with. We can work with frequency modulation. We can work with um, volume modulation um, or amplitude modulation, and we can work with delay modulation. So these are the primary sections that can be modulated and they have interaction with each other or within each other. Over here in the top left, what we have is our filter shape. So this is going to be what the filter is actually looking like and how we're applying it. And so there's a variety of things, uh, including having it respond um, in, in pure gain, right? To the incoming sin signal or having it modulate that way. So you can create kind of pumping and breathing effects. So it, this just alone creates a huge variety of things that you can do. You have an LFO shape. Uh, and what this does is allows you to go between different characteristic shapes. Uh, and then there is a rate that's attached to it, which can be worked synchronously to the tempo of the song. Or you can just sort of free wheel it um, and, and go just to something that feels right. When you sync it to the song, the cool part is that it will follow and lock to um, whatever increments that you select here. So in this case, eighth notes, it'll kind of move in eighth note increments based off of whatever selection it is that you have here. So we can kind of play with uh, some of these different parameters here, which we will, and, and set sweeps that follow half notes, eighth notes, quarter notes, triplets, etc. cetera. Um, so those are the basic sections there. Now, if we select this to follow a side chain, we can actually have the input signal or the filtering um, uh, triggered by a sidechain signal. So we could have something else feeding in that would, would cause this um, to create modulations or filter sweeps or movements and things along that nature. Down at the bottom, we have a sequencer, uh, a 16 step sequencer, and we can change how many steps just by moving um, this um, knob right here. So we can make it go into odd numbers. And then we have sliders that allow the sequencer filtering to kind of you know do whatever shape it is that we want it to do. And then there's a swing that you can add in. A, you could got a rate, which allows you to make it run synchronously. So as I slow down this rate, you will see that the number movement here kind of follows and, and slows down accordingly. So again, here set to eighth notes, we can set the steps and then we can set uh, different sequence events, um, you know, whatever way that we want to uh, set it up, right? And and this way, you know, in this case, it's just kind of doing like a sawtooth thing, but we can, we can do this type of stuff and, and we can set it up and program it to be any way that we want it to uh, happen rhythmically and kind of move it around. All right, so there we have that. Now, in the uh, top right here, we also have some uh, a way of adjusting what's normally going on. We have a stereo spread, we have a drive control, which adds some distortion, a crush, which is like a bit cruncher, and then a smoothing characteristic. And this allows us to smooth some of the filtering characteristics, which can sometimes be kind of harsh. There's an overall mix control for wet dry if you insert it on an audio track. So that's real simple. You have input and output gain controls. You see a little clipping here. Always fun when you have some clipping. Um, and then we have the three modulation based sections. Now, the way that they work primarily is that when we are working, let's say, for example, within the frequency section, I'm just going to um, reset some of the parameters here, which changes the modulation. What we have is we have a frequency start point. So what you do is you could see the numbers there are sweeping to through the different frequencies. So we have a 20 to 20 kilohertz sort of range here, and we could start our filter somewhere in the middle of that. So if we're working with a signal, Right, so we can kind of work within this and we could select the filter shape. So we could do it. Right, we can do a band pass filter. We can band reject filter. That's a comb filtering. And then we could have it respond purely to dB, right? So we can. And this just becomes like a gain control. Okay, so so when we're working with the filter here, we can we can set our sort of starting point or modulation point. Now, 
the three sliders that you see around here, frequency, follow, and sequence, work with the different sections. So if we want this, um, if we want to follow, for example, the input signal, we can have the modulation based on the part itself. Now, if I sweep it in the positive direction, it will push the filter frequency upward when the input signal triggers. So now it's just responding to the envelope and I can set here how much. If I go in the opposite direction, it will sweep downward. Okay, so you can see, and then this sets the starting point. So that's like really cool. So the input signal is now triggering the modulation. So that's the follow section. If I go with the LFO, then it will follow this shape and the rate that I have set here. So. Now you notice that it goes centered around here. Now if I go in this direction, it will go low first and then high. Or the other way around. And then I can select a shape. And including random movement. And this sets the sweep of how far it kind of moves. So you can select your things there, or you can have the sequencer drive it. And if the sequencer drives it, then this could be pretty crazy here. Well, this is going to set the range, you know, by the amount, but the steps will follow basically on what we have programmed here. So the idea of the plugin then is we can select and run any or all of these modulation sources together. Now, when I do this is also, this is a resonance control. And this resonance control controls the shape of that filter. So it can be very soft. And let's just kind of... Or... I can make it really sharp, which is something that you would more likely hear. Now, um, here from this, we can also modulate the re the resonance. So in other words, I can actually make or enhance using the same LFO filter that's, in this case, that's driving this, make it actually increase in amplitude. Make it go the opposite direction. So you see it enhances lower versus higher. Right now it's also following a little bit of the input signal. So I'm going to negate like that. So I can have it just follow and kind of push with the envelope of the incoming signal or just have it follow the sequencer. And because this is going through a three-step process in a four-beat cycle, it's kind of cycling around some interesting kind of movement. In fact, I can step it back here so it goes through 15 steps instead of 16. And then you get kind of interesting mixes of different movements. And then we can also toggle through some uh, slope parameters, which increases this even more dramatically, which changes like the slope of the resonance. Um, now, when we modulate and put delays in this type of thing, the modulated delays can actually be part of this cycle or they can be after it. So in other words, if this is included, the regeneration is included in the filtering or whether the filter section happens and feeds, or actually delays feed into the filter section, or um, whether they're sort of connected and, and sort of running um, together. And then we have feedback, wet and dry controls. So you can hear just like some of the basic things here. I'm gonna hold off on this for a second and just kind of get into just some of the other things like the drive control. This is really adds like a, like a great, just kind of grit to it. And the smoothing control, can kind of smooth out a little bit and then it got a bit crunching. 
And uh, it'd be cool if you could actually modulate that. There's maybe the one thing that's not modulated on this, which would be kind of cool. Um, so you can kind of work within all those parameters just to kind of create and envelop original sounds. Now, from here, of course, if we do something extreme, we can always work with the wet-dry mix or have it kind of run full frequency. So this is just like a basic example with a bass. Um, I could also pull in a, um, a guitar track here which I think I have here with, um, so if I zoom in in the right direction. Um, nope, I think I may have edited, there we go. Uh, just may have edited it away for a second. Okay, so let's uh, work on uh, this guy here. And here we can kind of get into a little bit more. We have also a filter suite. And I have delays that are that are kind of The way that you mix the delays in, because you don't have to modulate the delays, is like we just have a guitar part, so let's just listen to what that is. And with the spread width here, what I'm doing is you're hearing some movement going left and right. So I can uh, create some separation in terms of the filtering. So I have a little bit of that going on in here. And then I have I can mix in some delays. So now if I set it up like this, they sort of run in parallel. So we get more of the original sound. If I set it up here, then the delays entirely filter in through the fil go in through the filters. So I can mix in a little bit. So I have a reverse filter, a high pass filter that's kind of running here, that's kind of sweeping somewhat slowly. And, and from here, what I can do is I can set up any kind of delay. Um, if I keep it synchronous here, it'll be musical. And then I can take the right side if I want to, and I can offset it. So I can have it do like a dotted version. of. All right, so now we get a little bit of left-right movement. And if I put some modulation on that, it gets sort of wacky. So in this case, I could use something that is um, I'm trying to think of like the easiest source here. I could actually do something um, uh, that kind of moves like this here within the sequencer. And so I'll just kind of whip something like this together here just to have a little bit of fun with it. And then I'll just kind of just mix in a light. And that just kind of mixes in just a touch of modulation. Right, so it kind of creates just a little bit of movement through there, and it's very rapid. Um, you know, so I can get, a, in this particular case, I can actually slow it down a little bit. Just so you can hear what, like, the effect. So just kind of mix in just enough so it's... Kind of create a little detone, detoning uh, and uh, detuning of the delays and stuff. And you could set the amount of feedback right here. And then here we're driving the track.
<laughs> and then you can get into all kinds of crazy stuff when you start working with some of the parameters. But a really, really, really cool, amazing modulation-based filter plugin with delays um, and the interaction between all the parts allows you to just basically mangle a sound and completely recreate it rhythmically or whatever way that you want to um, and completely reshape it. You can do, when you really dig into it, you can do everything from chorus and phase effects, just filter sweeps, um, you know, um, modulation, uh, volume pumping. Um, if you just want, want to get into it on that level, you could just really mangle sounds here when you get into the resonance filtering. All right, and just really redrive things. So it's just like um, uh, just an idea machine when you start really playing into it. But if you understand like how the basic different uh, source mo the modulation sources work and how you can kind of add them in, uh, and you can create some really, really, really interesting things. Um, a quick way to kind of learn the plugin is just to kind of load in some of the presets. So there's just loads of different types of, um, of presets here that give you, uh, you know, some cool ideas or cool starting points. And you could just kind of toggle through them, find something that you like, and then just sort of build and adapt it to whatever it is that you're doing. Very cool plugin. Um, uh, a real go-to when you need something just to restructure a sound. Um, the uh, Waves um, Metafilter.